Well, the reason that quantum theory is particularly appropriate to the concept of distant healing is that the theory requires that mind be put back into physics. Because classical physics, there's no need for mind. In fact, if you follow the history of it, you find that because classical physics has no need for the concept of mind, that many neuroscientists today believe that there is no awareness. There's no actual consciousness in there. It's like we're a giant clockwork machine, and there's an illusion of mind, but that's all it is. What they don't answer then is, well, who's having the illusion? And it becomes a recursive problem that classical physics really doesn't know what to do with. Quantum physics changes this significantly because it was recognized very early on that you couldn't extract the, the object of study, some sort of object out there, from the person, the observing system that was looking at that. And that creates a recursion in which the mind of the observer and the observed system are linked. It doesn't, we have to be careful not to imagine that this means we live in a solipsistic universe where everything is caused literally by the mind. That's not what quantum physics says. But what it does imply is that the mind is involved in some way in how our measurement of the universe takes place. And so we take that, the mind is important, we take the observation that things that appear to be separate are in fact not, and suddenly we have something which points in a rational direction as to why my thinking about your body at a distance might actually work. I observe you at a distance, or I, I mentally observe you at a distance, and in principle, from a quantum point of view, that will change not only me, but it changes you as well.